I sure wish I knew Japanese. And welcome back to Select Love's Drawing Hour in the part where I make a new character skin. Since Pet Pal is now finished and the only development on Pet Pal is the ending of Pet Pal, which I don't want to spoil, I am also adding the post-game content and I'm going to be discussing that while making a character skin. One of the post-game contents is the character skins, this being a lot of different multiple character skins that Pet Pellington can wear. These are unlocked by collecting different collectibles in-game, so whenever you get to a certain amount, a new character skin is unlocked. And my idea for these character skins is for them all to be very unique and visually different than each other. A thing I dislike pretty heavily in games is when you unlock a new character, cosmetic skin, and they look pretty much the same as the main character, but recolored. So for a lot of Pet Pals character skins, I'm trying to steer away from this design feature. This character skin is one of the more different ones because it is Pet Pal as a big old sack of organs. I have been drawing over it throughout this entire devlog. The actual method I use for making a new character skin is just drawing over the base Pet Pal sprite sheet which is used for the Pet Pal 3D model because for some reason Pet Pal is a 3D model. And what I do is I just draw over the specific parts of these with the new aspects of the visual design. I chose the organ version of this to show off in the devlog because I feel like it is the most different of the actual character skins to the base character skin and really shows off this actual design. What I'm doing now is I'm drawing different organs in the place of where the body parts of Pet Pal are going to be. So instead of the skirt portion of Pet Pal, she now has her small intestines. These are all going to be very colourful and cartoony because I think if I did a bunch of detailed organs that were regular organ colored, it would look too gross. So all I'm really doing for this is I'm drawing the vague shape of what an organ would look like, I'm adding some shine to it and some detailing to it, and that is all I really need for the character skin. I'm drawing these just overlapping with the base section of where the actual sprites are going to be, just to have the actual parts of the body in the correct place. I actually don't have the 3D model of Pet Pal up when I do this, I just do it in 2D and I check the placement of it afterwards, but honestly this has made me my 17th character skin that I have drawn, and after a while I kind of just have a good idea of the placement of the 3D model of Pet Pal and the actual parts that I'm going to be drawing. You may notice there is a black border around all the sprites. This is just wherever there isn't an actual 3D object that has a sprite shape, so I can tell that the hand, for example, is just the square around it that is not covered by a black shape. So anywhere within that shape, I can now draw and I will know that the 3D model of the hand is going to register the sprite for that section. What I'm doing for this part is I'm drawing the actual muscles of Pet Pal's hands and arms. Since there isn't any actual organ parts for the body and the arms and legs, I'm just drawing the vague impression of a muscle. For this, all I'm doing is I'm drawing different colored shapes for where her fingers would be and where the muscles in her hand would be to give the impression of these little muscly shapes for her hands and feet. Realistically, this is a pretty simple part to draw, I just need to redraw over the hand and get the colours right to give the impression of it being a muscly body part. Now I'm drawing the feet, and this part is probably my favourite. Just for toes I add little dots, and that's the impression of the toe muscle. And that's all I need for the actual muscly body parts. I'm making an overlay layer for this, just to give some impression of detailing on this, because I didn't really want to have too much shading on the muscle, because I didn't feel like drawing it because the muscles are the most complex part. And also because I felt like maybe looking a bit too creepy if I did a lot of definition and shading, so I'm really just giving this overlay layer of scratchings on top of the muscle to give the impression of what a muscle would look like with its sort of pulled joints. Now I'm drawing the backpack element of the Pet Pal skin for the muscle. The backpack part of Pet Pal's design is maybe my worst idea for Pet Pal's design possible because having to come up with a logical backpack design for Pet Pal in all of her character skins is a little bit complicated. Some character skins simply don't have a design that would make sense for a backpack to exist on Pet Pal, but for the muscle skin, all I did is draw some bones and a skeletal 
impression of this because I figured that it would look different enough from the regular muscle section without not making sense in the character skin. Then for her hat, which is also another part of Pet Pals design that is pretty difficult to think of actual hats and designs for each of her different character skins, but this one was very easy. I just had a skull on top of it, and then for the inflated version, which is this different sprite that is stretched out from the regular sprite of the hat in an animation, I will just draw a brain for this and add the same level of shading as I have done for her head brain. Since this is just going to be a transparent pass of the Pet Pal design, which isn't going to be very easily seen, I'm just going to add a little bit of transparency to this. Then finally, all I have to do is draw Pet Pal's smear frame. This is when Pet Pal dashes into something and then bounces off. A smear frame is included, which then rotates around very quickly and gives the impression of Pet Pal cartoonishly slamming off an object. All this really is, is the colour scheme that is used for this character skin and then drawn in different stretched visuals. The Muscle organs, I'm just drawing a little impression of those in the center of them, and then a dashing little line around this to give the impression of them spinning around very quickly. And then finally, I'm just looking at the model in Blender to make sure all the body parts are in the correct place and it doesn't look old when animating. Realistically, this character doesn't have any hair, so there's not a whole lot of issues generally when I'm designing a new character. The biggest issue with the character is going to be in the fringe section, the front of the hair, which is going to look the most odd in the character's design, but luckily enough, this version of the character doesn't have hair because how are you going to draw hair as an organ? Oh, I could have drawn, like, the, the intestines, and that could have been gross. No, this character doesn't have hair because I envisioned the design of this character first, of just a big brain with eyeballs, and I thought it looked creepy enough. Now I just need to add a render of the character for the costumes bubbles in the hub area. So all I do for this is I make a render of the character with transparency, and then I have the character's render. I then just place this in the actual bubble object in the hub area, as we are watching right now. Then Peppo jumps into it, and her character costume is changed into the disgusting organy Pep Pell. I love this character skin so much. This is, as I have mentioned, an optional character skin in the game. So, when compared to the regular character skins, I feel like the optional character skins that you unlock throughout the game by getting collectibles are going to be allowed to be a bit more silly and a bit more wacky than the regular character skins. The reasoning for this is pretty, really simple. The regular character skins you unlock by beating levels has to have some level of connection to the level you have beaten. So, the clay one has to look like clay, the dessert one list has to look like a dessert, the trash trail has to look like a tree or nature in some sort, but if you just get a bunch of collectibles and then you unlock a character skin for it, they can look like anything you want, and I can just make stuff up. There is a lot of collectibles in Pet Pell, you unlock a costume every 25 to 30 collectibles, so realistically I need to have maybe 10 to 20 character skins that the player can unlock, probably more around 10, because because I have to draw all these myself and they take a, a bit of time, and the game's coming out soon, so I can't really spend a lot of time drawing funny characters. But I think drawing alternate character costumes for Pep Hell is a very funny part of the Pep Hell design process. It's just a silly little creative exercise that I get to do to exercise some character design and also just have a little bit of fun. Drawing this character costume was pretty simple because it isn't an overly detailed one and also it's just a silly design in general. So I had a lot of fun doing it. Seeing Pep Hell act around and move about in the different character costume design I think is incredibly satisfying. Even though, personally, I'm the type of person that when I'm locking a costume for a character in a single player game, I will always use a default skin because I find those the most satisfying and interesting looking when all costume alternate designs I feel like look a little bit gimmicky and not as interesting as the main character. But even still, I know character costumes are a fun thing for players to unlock and even if you are not the type who likes to wear character costumes, it is still very satisfying to know you have unlocked something through all of your hard work collecting character cosmetics. If you have an idea for a Pat Pellington skin that you would like to see in Pat Pellington, you could leave it in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Da-ba-da-ba.